Well, one of uh, SBC's ongoing efforts is to engage, mentor, and encourage the next generation of design professionals. We maintain working relationships with Canada's leading colleges and universities through our bursaries, my tax pa partnerships, white papers, and our internships. One of my favorite activities is the student research presentations. And I'd like to invite our first presenters, Dima Ahmad and uh, Jessica Fenn, to come up and describe their research projects. If you come up, I'll read your bios on the way up. Jessica is a recent graduate of the Bachelor of Architecture Science program at Ryerson University. She majored in architecture stream in her fourth year and enrolled in a joint studio course with students in the building science stream. The studio course provided Jessica with the opportunity to explore methods of achieving low carbon and net zero design and directed Arbor, the urban cabinet project, to be very focused on sustainability and the impact of design on the surrounding context. Dima Ahmed, a mid-level architecture student, just graduated with a bachelor's degree. Dima has studied in the architectural science program at Ryerson University. As a reflection of her interest and devotion in technicality and design, she has chosen to major in building science during the fourth and final year of her undergraduate studies. During her four years of study, she has built a great experience in designing projects of different scales, from small street installations to real life housing projects. Her interest in architecture has helped her to further educate and expand her knowledge as part of her learning experience. Take it away, ladies. Hello, good afternoon. So I'm Jessica and this is Dima. And as mentioned, we are recent grads of the um, Bachelor of Architectural Science at Ryerson University. Um, so I majored in architecture stream and Dima in the building science. And together we took a joint studio with uh, the two separate fields. Um, in this course, it allowed us to explore and research sustainable architecture and building performance. So our project um, is named Arbor, which is actually Latin for the word tree, uh, which you'll see we incorporated literally and metaphorically into our project. Um, so the point of this project was to target net zero energy and net zero carbon. Uh, we designed a temporary urban cabin for young professionals seeking an alternative lifestyle. And the, the design process evolved around developing a high-performing and functional residential prototype for an urban setting. So to start us off, um, the site that we chose is adjacent to the Meadowway, which is actually a hydroline corridor and park that runs from the Don Valley in downtown Toronto all the way out to Rouge Park in East Scarborough. To the north of our site is the Meadowway, and we've chose this site due to the mixture of different land uses. Um, to the top right corner, uh, we have some residential uh, single-family homes. Uh, to the south, there's some commercial and industrial land usage. And a closer look at our site, we chose to develop um, and underutilize uh, abandoned parking lot behind this commercial space. Um, we decided to create a community with our urban cabins. Um, the benefits of this being uh, the sharing of resources such as solar power and a community garden in the center. So look into our design. Uh, this is the ground floor plan. We decided to create an open floor plan. Um, this space um, providing multiple functions, such as living, dining, recreation, kitchen, as well as storage. Lofted uh, above the space is the sleeping area, and we chose to contrast it to the very open layout by creating a much more intimate space. So here are two sections of our uh, project. Here you can see that Dima and I wanted to add um, an element of playfulness into this project. We created um, a tree-like structure to hold up uh, the lofted space. And contrastingly, on the exterior, we chose to be very minimal. Um, however, there is a hint of playfulness with this irregular hip roof. 
and it also is a subtle reflection of the interior programming within. Uh, we chose to keep the we chose to keep the uh, elevations or the fenestrations minimal to keep the cubic form true to itself. Uh, in terms of materiality, we chose to have vertical charred cedar siding um, for fire resistance and uh, because it is uh, very weatherproof, as well as aesthetic value. Uh, for the roof, we chose to have a black matte uh, corrugated metal panel. Here is an exploded exonometric of our structure. Uh, we, cho we chose to utilize uh, light timber framing um, as well as foundational screw piles, both to lower our carbon footprint. And here's a closer look at the structure of the, the tree-like structure holding up the loft. Um, this one in particular is the connection between the beam to the column uh, it's held up with metal T-plates that the beams just slot onto. Next here is the beam connection to the rafters and again just bolted together with metal plates. And lastly the beams underneath the flooring of the loft, they're just notched together. And here is a little bit of a look into the interior design of the space. Up top you can see how uh, the footprint of the loft uh, sits above the living area. Um, to the bottom left, you can see we decided to use foldable furniture, and this actually tucks into that seating area you see there. Um, that seating area also doubles as storage space. And just behind, we have panels, which allow access into our mechanical space for maintenance. So for energy modeling, we have used two softwares for energy modeling, um, HOT2000 and Sapphire. And as you see, they both uh, have similar results with around 2200 kilowatt hours per year of total energy use and an estimated energy use intensity of 73 kilowatt hours per meter square per year. And to offset that energy demand, red screen was used to determine the most optimum system for um, solar harvesting. And it was found that six solar panels generate enough energy to supply the needed electricity for the cabin. And the solar panels are connected to three salt water batteries and an inverter to supply the needed electricity for the um, equipment, such as the appliances, the lighting, and the split units. And uh, for water, actually, uh, one of the project's targets was to reduce on-grid water supply by utilizing rainwater. So a rainwater harvesting system was designed to cover the water use of the toilet. As for potable water, it is supplied by the city considering the restrictions of uh, quality control and the small size of the cabin. And all the equipment needed, uh, with all the required equipment such as the batteries, the water tank, and the water heater are placed in a closet inside the cabin. This way, um, the internal, internal gains of the mechanics will help to reduce the uh, heating load during winter times. So the wall section, um, this shows a wall section of the envelope, which was designed to follow and exceed passive house standards. Some of the achieved targets for thermal performance are R60 for the roof, R53 for the wall, R40 for the floor. These thermal resistant values are achieved with the use of weatherproofed wood fiber insulation for the wall cavity and insulated eye joists for structure which also reduces the carbon footprint of the cabin as well as um, reducing the heat loss through the envelope. For the uh, floor detail, to avoid using concrete for the floor, double stud system was, uh, uh, with weatherproofed uh, wood fiber insulation is designed for the floor. And as for the foundation screw piles, they are supporting the cabin using a wood beam that would um, uh, run along the length of the cabin. And 
And uh, for the roof detail, it shows how the solar panels are mounted on the roof, which is using, which is done using steel angles bolted into the uh, roof joists. Uh, this render shows the lofted sleeping area, and as you can see, it is illuminated by the um, uh, by direct by indirect sunlight sunlight the indirect light that is through um, landing through the skylight. And this shows uh, the open floor plan with the uh, windows framing the views into the community garden. And this is the tree-like structure supporting the bedroom, uh, uh, the lofted space with the kitchen area below. And this is the community surrounding the garden. Thank you.